we're going to talk about the NFC West. And obviously, the Rams won the Super Bowl last year, winning the division. Um, and we're just going to kind of pile in what we think is going to happen and kind of give you guys our thoughts on who's going to come out on top of that. So, um, Kyle, I'm just going to ask you, uh, who do you think is going to win the NFC West and why? Well, when it's all said and done, the LA Rams are going to be NFC West champs. This is pretty cut and concise. The Rams have the best roster to work with top to bottom in this division. When you look at the offensive side of the ball, Matt Stafford coming off of a Super Bowl championship last year in his first season with the Rams. Now that he has a year underneath his belt, a year with Sean McVay and learning the system that he runs, and you tie that in with the offensive weapons that he has at his disposal, I just expect that this offense is going to continue to hum like it did last year. You have Cooper Cup, who's coming off one of the most productive wide receiver seasons that we've ever seen in NFL history. You added Allen Robinson into the mix, signing him this past offseason. You have Van Jefferson, who's a solid number three receiver. And then you have Tyler Higby to throw to at the tight end position. You tie that with what they have out of the backfield with Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson. The Rams are going to continue to score points at a high clip. This is not only one of the best teams in the NFC West. This is one of the best teams in the NFL, period. Now, when it comes to the rest of the division, this is where things kind of get interesting. So at number two, I'm going to put the Arizona Cardinals. The reason why is I have more faith in Kyler Murray than I have with the 49ers and their quarterback spot. So I have the 49ers at three, but I'll get to them in a second. Now, granted, DeAndre Hopkins is out for the first six games due to uh, PED suspension. Obviously, that's going to hurt them early on, but I do think that Kyler's really going to put his team on his back and carry them to the promised land. Now, granted, I don't think it's going to work out by beating the Rams. I don't think it's going to eclipse what the Rams are going to produce this season. But I think when I look at the Cardinals this upcoming season, they had a pretty successful year last year. They had a great start, but at the end of the year, they just fell apart. They just did not have the consistency in the back half of the year that they had in the first half. And I think they're going to learn from their mistakes. I think they're going to learn that, you know, getting off to a great start is one thing, but you have to be able to maintain consistency. And the defense started giving up touchdowns at the end of the year. The offense wasn't as consistent, but I think, like I said, they're going to learn from their mistakes and they're going to find a way to be competitive in the NFC West. They may be playing for a playoff spot, but time will tell, but this is still a good team to work with, with the Cardinals. When it comes to the 49ers, Trey Lance is somewhat of an unknown. He's extremely athletic. Uh, there's a lot of potential associated with him, but we just don't know what he's going to provide San Francisco and that 49ers offense yet, just because he hasn't really gotten a lot of starter reps yet. Jimmy Garoppolo is being held out of practice and being held out of first team reps simply just because the 49ers are looking to trade him and they don't want to possibly screw up his trade value if he were to get hurt at any point in the preseason or if they were to put him in any sort of game reps during a regular season. I do like the fact that the 49ers have a great defense to work with. In large part, that's what got them all the way to the NFC Championship last year and one game away from going to the Super Bowl. But you tie in all the unknowns at the quarterback spot with Trey Lance. I'm not as confident with them compared to the Cardinals. And that's why I have the 49ers at the number three spot. And then to round out the division, it's clear as day. The Seattle Seahawks are going to be the worst team in the NFC West. When you go from Russell Wilson to Drew Locke, that's a huge step down. Not only that, uh, they lost Chris Carson. Uh, Chris Carson retired due to the litany of injuries that he sustained throughout his career. He was an extremely viable back when he was healthy, but he just couldn't stay on the field. Uh, overall, Seattle is just a dumpster fire of a team, I think, going into this year. I don't think they're going to really be productive. They're going to be one of the more mediocre teams. Uh, offense, I think they're going to be struggling. On the defensive side of the ball, they've been giving up points left and right, so I think that will continue. But overall, I just don't really Seattle. I just don't see Seattle going uh, in a productive way from this point forward. So just to kind of round this out, I've got the Rams at the number one spot. I got the Cardinals in the number two spot the 49ers in the number three spot. And then to round out the NFC West, I have the Seattle Seahawks. So I'm actually going to have the same thing, except I'm going to have the Cardinals and 49ers flipped. So I agree completely. The Rams have done enough this off season to maintain their lead on the NFC West. They're going to win it. In my opinion, I think it's not going to be close just because 
that offense is too high powered to function and 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 have the mistakes that it did last year. Now this is an entirely uh, comfortable, familiar group of offensive individuals. Allen Robinson is finally going to get the shine that he rightfully deserves that he has not had basically since Jacksonville. And um, he's now out of Chicago, so I think that they win the division. Um, I'm actually going to put the 49ers at second because I do believe that they are still a well-put-together team. I think that they are bringing back a lot of key players. Obviously, the change at the quarterback position is going to be the biggest question mark, but Kittle is healthy. Ayuk is healthy. Debo Samuel got that extension. Um, they had great success running the football. And then, of course, if Trey Lance can provide a little bit of mobility and diversity within this playbook, I think that he adds a different dynamic that Jimmy Garoppolo was unable to do, as well as remain healthy because Jimmy always found a way to get hurt every year. Although Trey did miss a few games last year with a sprained knee. So I'm going to have the 49ers at second. The Cardinals are at third just because Kyle alluded DeAndre Hopkins is suspended for six games. But they also lost uh, Hassan Reddick. They lost... Chandler Jones, J.J. Watt's getting up there in age. They lost Christian Kirk in the offseason. Obviously, they lost Chase Edmonds. They did, however, bring in Hollywood Brown, but over the last couple of years, he's been known to have a lot of drop passes, and you know he's just not been a consistency for me. And, of course, their, their lead back in, uh, of course, now I'm going to forget his name, James, James Conner, he's, he's also had a couple of injuries over the last couple of seasons. So it's like... The Cardinals are always that team that starts off red hot. Last year, they were undefeated up to, I think, week eight or week nine, and they kind of just plummeted from there. And I, I truly and honestly believe until they get their act together and really solidify their identity, I don't consider them a threat in the NFC West, let alone making the playoffs. And then I'm not even going to beat a dead horse here. We all know Seattle is going to go nowhere. You can't win games without quarterbacks. We all already know that. They don't have the defense to make up for the lack of offense. They have the weapons with Tyler Lockett, Noah Fant, and DK Metcalf. And we all know that Rashad Penny led the NFL in in, uh, rushing yards in the second half of the season when he fully recovered from his injury. But once again, that is also another injury-prone back that they have on this roster. So we will just see how it goes, but I don't expect much from them, and I expect them to be a a top-five pick in the NFL draft this coming offseason.